high probability order blocks. Let's go. Right, so before we start, there's a few things we need to understand here. We cannot solely rely on order blocks when trading. This is not a complete strategy, but instead it's good guidance to reduce the likelihood of your zones failing. So, so the reason I put this in there is because I get a lot of questions from people where they send me their chart analysis and all they have is order blocks and they are wondering why their zones are failing. So we cannot solely rely on just order blocks, but we can look deeper into how certain zones are forming to make a better judgment call when we are selecting our zones. Right, so what do we need for a high probability order block? First off, we need to be in a premium or discount zone. We need to have a fair value gap. We need to have a break of structure and that's internal or external. And we also need some form of inducement. Right, so here's a very nice textbook example of how we can start looking at our zones. We're not gonna to spend too much time on this line graph because later on we will be going into some proper chart examples and looking deeper as to why certain areas work better than others. Now the problem with trading just solely off order blocks is you can find hundreds of order blocks throughout the course of a day on multiple different time frames. Now the question I get asked quite a lot is which time frame do I use? Now quite simply, the markets are fractal. So you will find POIs, breaks of structure, fair value gaps, candle patterns, all this sort of stuff on multiple time frames. But one important thing to understand is the higher time frame holds much more weight and significance than the lower time frames. So there is no magic time frame to be looking for your POIs. This will solely depend on whether you are a scalper, intraday trader, swing trader, what other confluences you are using. So here we have multiple order blocks to choose from. But one thing that we can do, we can start to narrow down which order blocks are more favorable and which are not. So here you can see, I have selected a few order blocks marked in red that are not ideal to be trading from. Now, as we progress, we will explain why these are not favorable to be trading from. So first off, right at the very top, we have these purple zones. We can see we've got a bit of order flow pushing into the market here. So we can see there is some intent for lower pricing, but at this point, it's not guaranteed. So trying to take a trade from one of these zones here is gonna be very high risk. Now, if we look down here, we can see we have a clear break of structure. We've got a low, higher high, higher low, higher high. And at this point, this higher low has had its structure broken. These points in here, these are going to be internal structure. I won't go too deep into internal and external structure. I do have videos referencing structure. So if you need to revisit those, then feel free to do so. But what we can see over here is this order block here is the one that has caused this structural break. Now, this is a very common place for a lot of traders to be getting into a trade setup. But what they are overlooking is what is going on above. We have an unmitigated POI here. Then we also have another unmitigated POI here. So taking a trade at this point, leave you open to a liquidity grab. Now, just because some of you trade smart money concepts, it doesn't mean you are immune to liquidity. As a smart money concepts trader, you are still a retail trader. Now, if we look up here, I have marked out a fair value gap. Now this fair value gap is an area that is likely going to attract price towards it. So what we need to think about now is if we are looking for a trade here, is there a reason for price to push higher than this? If so, then we should not be looking for a trade there. And the next point is, okay, if we're not expecting to take a trade here, let's have a look at this zone here. Is there a reason for this zone to fail? Well, quite simply there is. We have a fair value gap and we have an unmitigated order block. So we are likely going to see price return to this point, collect those orders and then see a reaction from. Another way a lot of people are getting caught up in the markets is when they see this break of structure, they are not looking at the overall trend of the market and seeing this high here being broken and classifying this as a change of character. When in actual fact, this is going to be more of a trap if you're looking at this as a change of character, thinking we are now seeing bullish pricing, when actually all we're seeing is quite simply a correction to return back to these POI over here. So when this happens and we do see that change of character, most traders are looking for a POI down here to trade off of, or they're looking for one up here. And in turn, failing to notice what the entire narrative really is. Now we can see we've put some premium and discount onto our chart. 
Everything below the 0.5 level is a discounted zone. Everything above is a premium zone. So if we are looking to sell, we want to sell in a premium zone. And the most premium price that we can see up here is going to be this area here. So logically speaking, if the large institutions are trying to get in at the best price, this price here is going to be far better than getting into a trade around this point. So if we do have unmitigated orders in a more extreme area of our premium or discount zones, these are the high probability trading areas. Right, so let's look at the real charts and how things really look like with real candlesticks. So first off, let's mark up all the POIs that we can find. So here we see, quite similar to our example, we have an order block just up here. This is our most extreme order block that we can see. That is still yet to be mitigated. Further below, we can see we have another order block just here. But is there a reason for this to fail? Yes, there is. We have an unmitigated POI here. We do have a fair value gap, which has had a partial mitigation. But because this has only had a partial mitigation and an unmitigated POI further above, we are likely going to see the rest of this refilled. So for that reason, we can mark this area here as our trap. Further below, we can see to the left, we have an order block over here. We can look at this last buy before the sell, or we could look at this entire range before the impulsive move. There is quite a few variations we can adopt with this approach. We can either look at the very last buy before the sell. We can look at the candlestick ranges. And I have done a video regarding order block variations. Feel free to check that out. Either way, we can see this zone here is still an area that we want to be avoiding. We can also see we have another POI over here. And we have another one just over here. Now you might be wondering why have I used the last buy before the sell, but then the last sell will here. Quite simply, if we look at this wick, we do have more buying pressure that has, that has exceeded the prior's candle range. So because there's buying pressure in here, I'll be looking at this point as well as the last buy before the sell on this point. So now we can mark out our breaker structure. This breaker structure is more significant than our internal points of structure like these here, purely because this is where the impulse has come from that has pushed price to the upside here and created the highest high. Once this is taken and we have candles closing below there, this is showing that there's actually intent that the market is willing to commit to lower pricing. But before it can do that, it needs to grab that liquidity. And where is the liquidity? It's these order blocks. Now, if we're looking at this leg here, we have this low to this high. We can then mark out either with a GAN box or a Fibonacci tool where the equilibrium is. So we have our center line just here. This is the 50% mark. Anything above here is premium pricing. Anything down here is discount pricing. We want to be looking at the most extreme point for our sales. And if we're looking for buyers, we want to be looking at the most extreme point for our buyers. And once we've had this mitigation of this order block to the extreme point, we could then start reducing down the time frames and looking for a more specific entry criteria to take a trade within this level. Now, on the higher time frames, as we can see, we're on the four hour time frame right now. There's quite a few areas that we can start targeting for our drawn liquidity to have a suitable target. Targets such as we have some imbalance here, which has been partially filled and then later refilled completely by this leg here. We have an order block here, which we can use as liquidity. We also have swing lows that we can use as liquidity. So we have quite a lot of reason for price to see a reaction from this and push further down. Now, a great tip for looking for high probability POIs is where are the majority likely going to be looking to take a trade if they are using order blocks? Now, if you can identify where the majority are, you are one step closer to seeing where the liquidity is and being able to identify high probability order blocks and reducing the likelihood of falling victim to these traps. Now, I have covered traps quite extensively in the past. I have covered liquidity extensively in the past and also order block variations. So, so please feel free to revisit those videos if you need a refresher. If you have found this video useful, hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe so I know that this is useful. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to follow me on Instagram. I am more active on Instagram than I am on YouTube. And I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have. But for now, trade safe and see you in the next video.